turning now to the Department of Corrections, which has partnered with the Bermuda College this year to provide a year-long middle management program, the Uniform Services Certification Program. I'm happy to report that four officers of staff, four members of staff, recently completed the program. To date, there have been eight members of staff who have completed this course. The Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme was reintroduced in 2009 to trainees at the co-ed facility. This world-renowned program provides young people with experience in volunteering in their community, physical activity, developing practical and social skills, and expeditions. It is hoped that the trainees will achieve all three levels of the program, bronze, silver, and gold, and they are well on their way to doing so. Two members of staff volunteered to travel overseas for the Duke of Edinburgh Instructors course in Jamaica and returned from that experience as qualified Duke of Edinburgh Instructors. <coughs> Management Services completed a review of the department and made several recommendations on creating a human resource department. This review also made recommendations to acquire additional administrative support and a revamping of the operations of, of the kitchens in each facility. The department successfully recruited a human resource manager in September last year. This was the first step in establishing a fully functional HR department that will tend to the needs of the department. An intense therapeutic community called the Right Living House was opened in November 2009 for inmates with long histories of substance abuse. This is a collaborative effort between the Department of Corrections and the Department of National Drug Control. Currently, the facility is fully occupied with 18 inmates who are undergoing intense counseling and therapeutic treatment for alcohol and drug abuse. The department held its annual commissioner's ball at the Fairmont Southampton Princess on February 13. It was extremely well attended, including colleagues from other government departments, including the Bermuda Police Service, the Bermuda Regiment, Port Services, Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service. The department uses this event to also recognize the achievements within the Department of Outstanding Staff. In April this year, the Department implemented a total ban on smoking in all of its facilities. The aim of this ban is to promote healthier lifestyles for inmates and staff alike, as well as to improve the environment in which employees work and inmates live. As a prelude to the ban, a year's notice was given and the Department conducted smoking cessation classes. The ban has been generally accepted with minimal resistance. This year, inmates again made hundreds of kites for the annual Kites R Us program. Inmates and staff, with assistance from members of the public, sold kites around the island and raised over $2,000 for charity. Inmates in this program also visited several schools to give demonstrations on how to build a traditional Bermuda kite. Five basic officers were successful in passing the promotion qualification examinations in May, which qualifies them for promotion to the rank of divisional officer. On June 1, 14 new recruits began their basic training as corrections officers. They completed training in August and are now deployed in the facilities. Contrary to our fears here earlier this year of a need to recruit from overseas, I'm pleased to report that all 14 of these officers are either Bermudian or spouses of Bermudian. The annual Father's Day event was held on June 19th at Malabar Field, the fourth such event to be held. A total of 22 inmates participated along with over 40 children. The aim of this event is to provide inmates with an opportunity to foster strong paternal relationships with their children in a less controlled environment. The event was a resounding success once again this year. The inmates must meet certain criteria to be invited to participate in this event. Many staff volunteer, and this year the event was supported by Prison Fellowship Bermuda and attended by members of the Treatment of Offenders and Parole Boards. In June, the department, in conjunction with Gina Spence Productions in Christ, staged a play entitled Where Are You, Dad? at the Lucy <coughs> James Center for the Performing Arts to rave reviews. The play was written by an inmate at the Coet facility with the major characters played by trainees from Kuwait. So it, was it contained very powerful messages about gang violence and families in Bermuda. As part of the cooperation within the ministry, at the invitation of the Bermuda Police Service, in July two officers worked with the FBI's anti-gang unit in Washington, D.C. 
The department signed a memorandum of understanding with the Minute Mounted Wellness Institute for the management of mentally unstable inmates. To date, this MOU has worked extremely well to the extent that those who need treatment have received it from MWI, in addition to ongoing psychiatric assistance that MWI provides to the department. The department holds regular mental health meetings with staff from MWI in order to monitor the needs of inmates and to confer on steps to be taken to manage them. You will also be aware of the recent agreement signed between the Bermuda Hospitals Board and Birmingham Solihull Mental Health Foundation Trust, Rayside Hospital in Birmingham in the UK, to accommodate <coughs> inmates in need of severe forensic psychiatric care. The department recently sent seven officers to the annual Texas Police Games, a popular competition for law enforcement agencies. Over 1,200 law enforcement officers from around the world participated in a wide variety of sports in Brownsville, Texas. Officers from Bermuda excelled at games, bringing in gold in bowling doubles and the 5K run, silver in bowling singles, and bronze in the 5K and 10K run, as well as gold. Just last week, the department launched a pin phone system in all corrections facilities. This system is widely used in prisons around the world and will allow inmates to make calls from within the units. Inmate calls will be monitored and can only be made to those persons on an approved call list. Family members may go online and purchase credit to inmate accounts. There are strict limitations placed on access to the system along with a maximum monthly credit allowance. The introduction of this system should see a reduction in the number of unauthorized cell phones within corrections facilities. By the first week in November, the department will have the service of two additional psychologists. This will bring the total to three, and their presence will make a significant impact on the programs that are offered to inmates such as sex offenders, drug and violent offender programs. The Corrections Red Co. work program continues to flourish. There are currently three inmates from Westgate working full-time for Red Co. in the dockyard area. This program serves to prepare them for reintegration back into the community. The department remains heavily engaged in community service and charity work. In addition to having regular workers at senior citizen rest homes and charities, we have assisted community groups throughout the island. Of note was the painting of several churches and assistance to Somerset Cricket Club with this year's cup match preparations. The addition of another canine handler and dog who recently returned from training in the U.S. brings the complement of three handlers and three dogs within the facilities. Several members of the correction staff participated in a nonviolent crisis intervention workshop which taught participants how to manage and diffuse potentially violent and volatile situations. It is intended to have those who participated in this course become certified as instructors in order for them to deliver this vital training to other staff members. An incentive program is currently in place that is directly tied to behavior, which drives movement from unit to unit depending on the conduct of the inmate. Based on behavior and compliance, Inmates graduate from one unit to another, with increasing privileges along the way at each stage. Improvements to the whole incentives program are under review with a view to including participation in self-improvement and educational programs. Four officers are currently in the UK as part of the ongoing training program to expose them to procedures and best practice in prisons in other jurisdictions. I cannot report on the work of the Department of Corrections without highlighting the outstanding cooperation that currently exists between the Prison Officers Association, Department of Corrections leadership, and the Ministry. On July 1st, I hosted a meeting for all corrections officers at Devonshire Recreation Club to hear firsthand their concerns and recommendations for improvements to the service. The meeting, which was attended by over 100 officers, was an informative exchange for both the Permanent Secretary and I and those present. I record here my thanks to POA Chairman Mr. Craig Clark and his executive for their advice and counsel throughout my appointment. Early in the new year, Corrections Headquarters will move to specially renovated accommodation in the Clock Tower building in Dockyard to allow for much needed renovations 
to the current facility in Happy Valley Road. And finally, significant changes to some legislation are in the pipeline, including changes to parole eligibility for foreign nationals, adjudications for inmates, and adjudications for officers. Much work has been done in this regard already, and I anticipate the formal part of this process, i.e. cabinet approval, followed by drafting instructions, is imminent. It remains for me then to thank Commissioner of Corrections, Lieutenant Colonel Edward J. Lamb, and his entire team for their support this year um, in leading the Department of Corrections.